Saving fuel by not driving to a meeting or training or to start your building permit process is good, but if you are on the road, you see green evidence at virtually every intersection. Take your typical traffic signal. Those red, yellow, green bulbs are not really bulbs at all. Been around a few years now, LEDs or light emitting diodes, way more energy efficient and they last years instead of just months like old incandescent bulbs. County's Department of Public Works has replaced more than 500 of the first generation LEDs with newer ones that save even more energy. But ideally you want to get out of your car and into mass transit. You can bop around on a bus, trek to work on the trolley, sprint on the sprinter and even coast on the coaster. And the county encourages its workers to set a good example by offering transit pass and bike to work discounts. More than 1,000 employees are in the program that helps defray some of the cost for monthly transit passes. That's 1,000 cars not on the road. But there are times when you just can't get out of driving a vehicle. So what do you do? You buy a hybrid, just like this one. The county has about 200 hybrid cars in its fleet. More than a dozen of them that run on compressed natural gas and about two dozen or so electric vehicles. That'll save more than 300,000 gallons of fuel over the life of these cars. We also carpool. The county's goal is to reduce its electricity consumption by 1% per square foot per year. And we're doing that through energy tune-ups in existing buildings and LEED certified green building design in all new facilities. And it's paying off. Since the 2000 energy crisis, the county has cut its electricity use by 14% per square foot and its natural gas use by 9% per square foot, which adds up to a savings of $11 million. Like many smart home and business owners, the county has looked up to the sun to save money. Seven county facilities now have solar panels converting sunlight into electricity, saving about $70,000 a year in utility bills and the county plans to install solar panels to even more of its buildings. It's one thing to preach about saving paper, it's another thing to do it. Part of a Board of Supervisors policy, county departments one by one have been switching to double-sided printing and copying. Our Department of Human Resources scanned all of its personnel files and moved its job application process online, which not only saves paper, but saves an applicant's information, making it easier for him or her to apply for more than one job. I hear the Family Resource Center in Kearney Mesa, they'll get about 40 to 50 new files coming in every day. Files about oh, this size, maybe. Now, over time, a file that size can grow into something like this. Now, in the past, this would have to be stored in a traditional file cabinet, like the ones you see here, taking up a lot of space. Now, all these documents get scanned. That's what these people are doing here. So, in the past, when you had a file like this, if this person were to move to a different facility, somebody would have to physically move this file to that facility to follow the customer. Now, once those documents are scanned, they wind up here for a few days, and then after that, it's all recycled. Now, think of all the paper involved in criminal cases. Well, the district attorney's office is working with the public defender and members of the defense bar to provide discovery electronically, reducing the need for all that paper. The sheriff's department is now using a records management system for crime and arrest reports that eliminates 100,000 case files a year. And the department has been scanning paper documents like criminal, medical, and personnel records to digital images, 22 million to date. And over at child support, they're filing court documents electronically, again saving paper, 76,000 sheets a year to be exact. We're all working on projects, and often we're working together. So how do we minimize the need for a bunch of printed drafts? Wikis or collaborative web pages allow staff to share ideas and work together without duplicating each other's efforts and without wasting paper. Water has certainly been in the news a lot lately. Restrictions, cutbacks, conservation, everybody pitching in to make sure there's enough water for everyone. Heck, even our guardian's water is dry. You see, the county was way ahead of the game. Water efficiency is incorporated into every new county building, resulting in a 20% usage drop compared to industry standards. So, how do we do it? Well, for our existing buildings, we retrofit the plumbing, switch to drip irrigation, smart irrigation controls, and we take out the water hogging plants and replace them with low water use plants. 
xeriscaping. Even the County Administration Center, built in 1938, is joining the new green world with low-flow toilets and automated faucet controls. And the new toilet flushometers at the George Bailey Detention Facility will save the county more than 24 million gallons of water a year. That's about 10% of the water used at that site and 4% of all the water used by the county. Water pollution is a problem too. Runoff from storm drains flows untreated into our rivers and oceans. Over at the County Operations Center several months ago, we brought in a lot of contractors to show off some new technology. In this case, the, the pavement, the blacktop, when it, when it rains, typically you would have water just collecting here and then eventually running off into the ocean. But not with this, with porous pavement, the water just percolates, soaking right into the pavement and then into the ground, not running off anywhere. When you're a nearly $5 billion organization with 16,000 employees, you go through a lot of things in an average day. The good news, the county recycles a lot of those things. Like paper, nearly 8 million pounds of paper here gets recycled. And when we print, we use recycled paper. You know those property tax bills? They're printed on recycled paper too. Office furniture. Purchasing and contracting will sell, reuse, recycle 95% of all the items sent to it. We have a lot of vehicles in our fleet. When the tires go bad, we recycle them. And oil, too. The County of San Diego recycles 80,000 gallons of used oil and 12,000 oil filters every year. The county recycled 16,000 gallons of used oil and 11,000 oil filters last year. Okay, here's one you may not have really have thought about. I'm at one of the county animal shelters where they feed cats, dogs, other small animals, cans of pet food every day just like this. Now, depending on the number of animals we have, that could be hundreds of cans of pet food every single day. Now, multiply that by three animal shelters, and you can see that's a lot of aluminum cans you'd go through every single day. Do you throw them away? No. You recycle. Same for items from the public. At our annual lawnmower trade-in, we accept used gas guzzlers and for $150 each provide folks with a new cordless and rechargeable electric mower. We also help with e-waste, household hazardous waste, used batteries, used motor oil, tens of thousands of gallons get recycled. People can easily access these sites, but if you want to see the king of recycling projects, check this out. This used to be the county operations center. Now, in the old days, the county, just like everybody else, would take all this old rebar and these old slabs of concrete straight to the dump. Not anymore. Well, see, nowadays, you grind all this stuff down, everything from coarse sand to these small rocks here. And you can use this as base material in the new buildings. And if you can't use it here, it can be sold, maybe for use in roads or some other construction projects. See, the beauty of it is nearly everything here can be reused. Which brings us back to the beginning. Looking ahead, the county's new general plan currently being drafted will incorporate new requirements to address greenhouse gas reduction and other climate change issues. We're also looking at ways we can increase renewable energy at our sites, solar panels at the East Mesa Detention Facility, three new libraries, and the parking structure at the new COC. And what about using landfill gas for electricity production? We're exploring that too. You know, like I said earlier, sometimes going green can be pretty simple. It's just a matter of taking a look around you and changing what you see or what you do. Up at the San Pasquale Academy, a county-run school for foster youth, students have cultivated an organic garden. Pretty cool, right? Well, get this, the vegetables they harvest are now being served up in some of our region's supermarkets. Eating locally grown food, walking instead of driving. That's not only good for the environment, it's good for us, and the county is making it easier for people to do that. We're making our neighborhoods safer and more enjoyable places to walk and bicycle. Here in La Mesa, the county's Health and Human Services Agency initiated a Safe Routes to School project. The city of La Mesa, the Grossmont Healthcare District, and the school district have all been instrumental in this walkability project. Just one of many joint efforts in San Diego County to combat childhood obesity as part of the Childhood Obesity Initiative. You see, green isn't just about flipping off the light switch. It's about how we live, how we work, and how we plan for our future. It's about doing the right thing for the environment and being good stewards of the public's dollars and our natural resources. For more information or to learn to sign up to vote by mail, become a green business, or garden without pesticides, 
visit the county's website at sdcounty.ca.gov.